Have you seen this video? If you go to McDonald's anywhere in the world, you will find uh, French fries or chips, as you call them, and you will find that they're always made from the same potato, the russet Burbank potato. This is a potato from America that's unusually long and, um, and difficult to grow. And, but that's what they want because uh, when, when you're making, when you're McDonald's, you like those red boxes with a little bouquet of very long chips. Uh, it looks really good. And so they insist that all their potatoes be russet Burbanks, and they further insist that they have no blemishes at all. And there's a very common defect of, of russet Burbank potatoes called net necrosis. And you've seen potatoes with a little brown line sometimes or spots that come through it. Well, McDonald's won't buy them if, you, if your potatoes have that. And the only way to eliminate that is to eliminate an aphid. And the only way to do that is with a pesticide called Monitor that is so toxic that the farmers who grow these potatoes in Idaho uh, won't venture outside into their fields for five days after they spray. Michael Pollan, the American writer, has famously criticized McDonald's french fries as an example of highly processed and unhealthy food. Pollan criticizes McDonald's not due to the nutritional inadequacies of its fries, but rather for their strict selection of potatoes based on size and appearance, excluding those with blemishes from aphids. Pollan argues that this practice compels farmers to resort to pesticides like Monitor, which he considers highly hazardous. He further points out that these potatoes must be stored in large warehouses for around six weeks to allow the release of chemical residues they contain. Monitor is a pesticide that contains the active ingredient methamidophos, which is an organophosphate compound. Organophosphate pesticides like methamidophos are known to be highly toxic to humans and can pose serious health risks, especially with prolonged exposure or improper handling. Short-term exposure to methamidophos can lead to acute poisoning symptoms, which may include nausea, vomiting, diarrhea, abdominal pain, headache, dizziness, excessive sweating, and difficulty breathing. Severe cases can result in convulsions, loss of consciousness, and even death. These pesticides can negatively affect the nervous system. Prolonged exposure can lead to neurotoxicity, causing symptoms such as tremors, muscle weakness, coordination problems, memory issues, and mood changes. Inhaling or coming into contact with methamidophos can cause respiratory irritation and distress. Some studies suggest that exposure to organophosphate pesticides can have adverse effects on reproductive health and fetal development. Pregnant women exposed to these pesticides may have an increased risk of preterm birth, low birth weight, and developmental disorders in their children. Michael Pollan criticizes how corporations cook food for profit rather than for the health of the consumers. He highlights how processed and fast foods are often designed to be addictive, with a focus on flavor enhancement, long shelf life, and cost efficiency, all of which can contribute to health issues in the long run. Salt, sugar, fat are the holy grail for the processed food industry. And they know when they hit the right formulas, they'll just send us over the moon for their products. They're not just getting us to like their products, they're getting us to eat more and more. You have to have something that is palatable. So between See, the... Explain the word, explain the word palatable. Just palatable meaning that people will consume it and that it's actually edible and l well liked by people so that they're uh, craving it or, or really like looking for it. The folks that make these foods, they study neurophysiology, they study evolutionary biology, they study how to make things addictive. Pollan argues that these additives can stimulate certain brain pathways associated with pleasure and reward, creating a cycle of craving and consumption. He refers to this phenomenon as the pleasure trap, where individuals are drawn to these hyperpalatable foods despite knowing that they might not be nutritionally beneficial. In the United States, the prevalence of overweight and obesity has reached alarming levels, posing significant health risks to individuals and straining healthcare systems. The consequences of this epidemic are far-reaching, affecting both physical health and overall well-being. The statistics are startling. More than 73% of U.S. adults fall into the overweight or obese categories. This epidemic has been steadily growing over the past few decades and shows no sign of slowing down. Overweight and obesity are associated with a range of serious health issues. These include type 2 diabetes, heart disease, high blood pressure, stroke, certain types of cancer, 
sleep apnea, and joint problems. The aggressive marketing and advertising strategies employed by fast food companies create an environment that encourages frequent consumption. Catchy slogans, colorful packaging, and promotional offers can influence people's choices and drive them toward unhealthy options. Many fast foods are laden with refined sugars and unhealthy trans fats. The combination of high calorie count, along with the addictive properties of sugar and fats, triggers pleasure centers in the brain, making individuals more likely to crave and consume such foods. Pollen encourages people to be aware of this potential for food addiction and to make conscious choices about the foods they consume. His approach often involves a return to whole, minimally processed foods that are less likely to trigger addictive eating patterns. By focusing on real ingredients and preparing meals at home, individuals can regain control over their food choices and potentially break free from the cycle of food addiction. Japan, in contrast, has managed to maintain relatively low obesity rates. Roughly 4.3% of Japanese adults are considered obese. But what are the reasons Japan has one of the lowest rates of obesity in the world, while the United States has the highest rate? We already know that Americans love fast food. A significant number of Americans, around 36.6% of adults, consume fast food on any given day, as indicated by a survey conducted by the National Center for Health Statistics from the Center for Disease Control. This equates to approximately 84.8 million adults eating fast food daily. In contrast, the fast food consumption patterns in Japan differ notably. According to research, a significant lower percentage of Japanese adults, around 3.6%, consume fast food on any given day. This shows a marked contrast to the United States, where fast food consumption is much more prevalent. Food prices are substantially higher in Japan, but the traditional Japanese dietary habits, although changing, are also healthier. The average person in Japan consumes over 200 fewer calories per day than the average American. In comparison to Americans, the Japanese exhibit a higher level of physical activity, primarily attributed to their everyday routines rather than structured exercise. The Japanese engage in more walking as an integral part of their daily lives. This inclination towards walking is partly influenced by the relatively higher costs associated with car ownership and driving in Japan. Whereas public transportation is not only convenient, but also involves more walking than using a personal vehicle. Japan boasts a significantly higher life expectancy than the United States. This disparity can be attributed to a combination of factors deeply rooted in lifestyle, healthcare, and culture. Japanese society places a strong emphasis on healthy eating, regular physical activity, and social connectedness. Their diet often includes nutrient-dense foods like fish, vegetables, and rice. Portion sizes tend to be smaller, reducing the risk of overeating. Additionally, the Japanese healthcare system emphasizes preventative care, early detection, and accessible medical services, which contribute to improved overall health. The strong sense of community and support also plays a role, fostering emotional well-being and reducing stress-related health issues. In contrast, factors such as sedentary lifestyles, fast food consumption, and healthcare challenges in the United States contribute to a lower life expectancy. But the Japanese possess another undisclosed element that appears to be the key to their extended lifespan and well-being, purple sweet potatoes, also known as Murasaki Emo. These vibrant-hued tubers, which are a staple in the Okinawan diet, are believed to play a significant role in the island's high rate of centarians. Purple sweet potatoes get their distinctive color from anthocyanins, which are powerful antioxidants. These antioxidants help neutralize harmful free radicals in the body, reducing oxidative stress, and lowering the risk of chronic diseases such as heart disease and diabetes. Okinawa sweet potatoes contain 150% more antioxidants than blueberries, which makes them a powerful cancer-fighting superfood. The anthocyanins present in purple sweet potatoes have anti-inflammatory properties that can help alleviate inflammation and related conditions such as arthritis and inflammatory bowel diseases. Purple sweet potatoes are a good source of dietary fiber, potassium, and anthocyanins all of which contribute to cardiovascular health. 
Potassium helps regulate blood pressure, while anthocyanins support healthy blood vessel function and may reduce the risk of heart disease. The dietary fiber content in purple sweet potatoes aids digestion by promoting regular bowel movements and preventing constipation. Fiber also supports a healthy gut microbiome, which is essential for overall well-being. Despite their natural sweetness, Murasaki emu have a relatively low glycemic index compared to some other carbohydrate-rich foods. This means they can help stabilize blood sugar levels, making them a suitable choice for individuals with diabetes or those aiming to manage their blood sugar. Purple sweet potatoes are packed with essential vitamins and minerals, including vitamin A, vitamin C, vitamin B6, manganese, and potassium. Vitamin A is important for vision and immune health, while vitamin C is a potent antioxidant that supports the immune system and collagen production. They are relatively low in calories and fat while being high in fiber and nutrients. Including them in your diet can help you feel full and satisfied, making them a suitable option for those aiming to manage their weight. Incorporating purple sweet potatoes into our diet can mark a powerful step towards better health and well-being. By choosing nutrient-dense foods and colorful foods like these, we can break away from the fast food cycle that often leaves us lacking in essential nutrients and burdened by health issues. Shifting our focus from processed and sugary fast foods to whole, nourishing foods like purple sweet potatoes can lead to a cascade of positive changes. We may experience more sustained energy levels, improved digestion, and better weight management. With enhanced mental clarity and a boosted immune system, we're better equipped to face the challenges of our daily lives. Making conscious choices about our diet doesn't just impact our own health, but also the health of our planet. By opting for nutrient-rich foods, we reduce the demand for foods that contribute to environmental degradation and promote more sustainable farming practices. So let's choose to break free from the fast food culture and embrace the colorful goodness of nature.